Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Alumni Talks webinar uh, that will give you first hand information on University of California Irvine Paul Marar School of Business MBA experience. My name is Mila, and I am the moderator of this webinar on behalf of Unimod. Please welcome our panelists, Arturo San Vicente, an alumnus from Paul Marar School of Business, who will be telling us about his educational journey and how acquiring an MBA degree has enhanced his career. Arturo is a business development and strategy manager at Microsoft, currently running a sales program in more than 50 countries to transform education and drive better student outcomes through the power of technology. Um, you will be able to send your questions during the entire webinar by typing them in the chat box, and our panelists will um, take the time to give you an answer during the Q&A session in the second half of this event. Okay, uh, thank you, Mila, so much for having me today. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I know that um, you know it's it's late in some uh, countries in the world, so I'm just happy to be here and share a little bit about my story. Uh, I know that many of you are going through the process of identifying if you want to do an MBA and if you do, what type of MBA, and then if if once that's decided, where do you go, right? So. Uh, the whole decision process is actually very daunting, and I went through it a couple of years back. So I wanted to share a little bit about my story and then how that played out for me. And then obviously, you know, where am I today? What were some of the actual issues or challenges or roadblocks that I went through? So I'll be sharing some of that along the way, but always feel free to uh, interrupt or ask any questions. I'll be happy to answer any of those. And so to tell you a little bit about, about myself, so again, my name is Arturo San Vicente. I'm originally from Mexico. Uh, and I wanted to share, first of all, uh, about me. Um, as I said, I'm from Mexico. I'm a big sports fan. Uh, and then one of the things in my you know, deepest passion is to be able to inspire others. Uh, and that's why, you know, when I'm called to this type of events of you know, being able to share my story and, and, and hopefully inspire some of you to to make a life-changing decision, then I'm all I'm all up for it, right? So those are the kind of things that really excite me and get me going. Um, from a background standpoint, before I came into uh, my MBA program, I didn't have those big names, and that was that was a challenge to begin with. Uh, if you are in Mexico, for instance, where I was, where I'm from, uh, the companies that I worked in, uh, they're actually you know big companies, but in the U.S., unfortunately, they weren't as known, so. Coming into it, I knew that I was going to have to do something different to be able to crack into the MBA program. Uh, I knew that I was going to have to do, you know, a great effort in my scores, in my present, in my essays, and my applications, and those type of things. So I was actually more uh, cagey into like, okay, how am I actually going to apply? What's my strategy? And you know, be able to prioritize that. Uh, for my background, I was uh, I had my undergrad in uh, marketing, and I worked in the innovation department for a building materials company in Mexico. They have operations in about 50 countries in the world. And then I said, you know, the, after my second year there, I said, you know, my thing is actually entrepreneurship. So I might want to do something more entrepreneurial. So I actually quit that company and started my own uh, small operation. I actually had a Italian restaurant business, which was a lot of fun, uh, but it wasn't a uh, Fortune 500 success, right? But uh, a lot of learning, learn experiences, really, that was what I call my first MBA. Uh, so it was a great experience for me to really be able to manage an organization, even if it was small, uh, being able to do my financial planning, marketing plans, operations, uh, product, customer-facing activities. So there's a lot of things that go on with being an entrepreneur. Uh, and ultimately, of course, at scale, it's what you'll learn during your, your you know, your uh, journey at business school. And then last, after my my path as an entrepreneur, uh, uh, I said, you know what, Let's, it's time to go back to the corporate world. And I had I found a great opportunity at Neoris, which is a, a technology consulting firm. And then with them, I worked as the marketing manager. I was actually the head of marketing for Mexico. Uh, great experience there. I actually had to reinvent the whole uh, division to really think less internal, more customer facing. Uh, so we did a lot of marketing automation, inbound marketing, a lot of great stuff that you know went on there. 
And due to that, I, that went into my next role, which was to start uh, the digital transformation practice. So as a consulting firm, we had a uh, very large customer. So my role was to you know, do something well with that customer around digital transformation. We created an amazing project. Uh, that project grew. Uh, we actually had to open offices in Prague and India. Uh, so it was a great experience to be able to be part of that. Uh, so, so you know, again, from there, it started my my more consultative uh, approach to things. Uh, and so, while I was doing that, I felt that, you know what, you know, there's there's a lot of things that are going my way, and I'm learning a lot, and I'm growing a lot in this role in this company. But my mindset was, a lot of the digital transformation that was going on was a lot of okay. How do we replicate what's currently available, right? And how do we do it for these customers, right? And in my mind, I was like, you know, I trust myself enough to be able to go out there and invent the future of technology, not just replicate what others are doing. And I knew that that was actually happening in California, right? A lot of the, the startup firms, a lot of tech companies are actually in California, obviously the West Coast. Uh, so I thought, you know, if you want to do a startup, if you want to do anything innovative, anything future or forward thinking, you have to go to the West Coast, right? And so that's when I started, you know, applying to a couple of programs. So if you look at the programs that I applied to, they were all in California, and there was one that was actually in uh, in the East Coast. And the only reason for that is because that program was very high in entrepreneurship. Uh, I think that you know entrepreneurship runs in my veins, so you know I'm always thinking about it. And you'll see along my story in business school. Uh, but I thought that I wanted to like be able to be part of that invention of the future so i said you know an mba is the right thing is the right stepping stone to be able to go into you know what's next in my career uh and i also thought you know my my dream and goal has always been to be the ceo of fortune 500 company and if i'm in your shoes i know that many of you are actually dreaming that so uh you keep pushing to that that dream because i know that there's a lot of opportunities to be able to uh to do that i mean this is not something crazy ultimately if you were going to business school chances are you want to be at the c level at least in a, in a um, big company right so or you might want to do entrepreneurship so it's it's entirely what you want to do with it now when i look at you know my journey of what was my decision journey when i started considering uh doing an mba so the first thing that came to mind was uh this was more like a dream uh, but I didn't really put any action behind it in the beginning. It was like, I want to do it. And then, and then I said, I want to do it again for about six months. And, you know, it's the right call. But until I started saying, okay, now it's time to A, start studying for my GMAT. B, start figuring out how am I going to afford this thing. Uh, and then C, how, you know, do, do my research around, around which programs I'm going to apply to. Uh, so in terms of, you know, actually taking that first step to me was more of, okay, once I take that first step, I know I'm going to be committed. And this, that, that's my mindset. You know, the first step that I think is let me start, you know, studying for the GMAT and really dedicate time. So I started blocking my agenda uh, just to have dedicate time to it so that I can be studying and doing those type of things. That was to me a big commitment because I knew that I was for serious, right? Now, along the way, uh, for good or bad, I saw a lot of people doing the same thing, really starting to to study and, 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 and to consider seriously doing a GMAT. But I also saw a lot of people quit. So if you're in that phase where you're on the fence, I would say stick to it because the way that I look at things today after my MBA is much different. My life changed completely. Uh, and I hope that for you as well. So keep at it. Um, the second thing from a financial standpoint, I really did have a lot of financial issues coming in. I mean, I, I was actually doing well in my in my uh, job in Mexico. I was doing financially well, but obviously, as you know, the the MBA is actually a big investment, right? And so my challenge was, you know, I don't even have money to be able to afford the full two years plus my stay in California which, or or anywhere, right? Which is going to be expensive in the U.S. At that time, all, all, also Mexico. Uh, uh, parry to the dollar actually went down. So it was actually a bad time for me. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I started talking to many different people and I said, you know what, there, there must be a way, right? If I can actually find my way in, I, I, can't, I can't know if I'm going to be able to afford it until I apply and then see if I'm able to get some sort of scholarship. And then 
when I started talking to people, I realized that there was a possibility to get scholarship in some of these programs, first of all, um, or fellowships. Uh, also, there's government loans that you can actually uh, get access to. In my case, I wasn't able to get access to when I when I had my own entrepreneurial venture. Unfortunately, I, I did bad my uh, credit score, so I couldn't even access to the, any of those credits. But what I did realize by speaking with some people at UC Irvine was, um, you know, there was the possibility of doing teaching assistantships, doing internships, doing uh, graduate research. So there was a lot of options once you are in the MBA uh, to be able to compensate for those shortcomings. So, and, and it wasn't only me, it was a lot of friends that I was with uh, during business school that also took advantage of that. So really being able to, uh, you know, just network yourself in, obviously be able to talk to people and say, hey, you know, are you, the graduating class just talk to them and say do you have a ta that i can actually access to you know those type of things so ultimately i think by uh, financial distress can never be an excuse not to do an mba because there's always a way to get through right and then you what you should know is that always the outcome once you leave business school is going to be a lot better than when you when you were before right so one of the things that happened to me while i was applying is uh, i had a couple conversations with the schools that actually accepted me um, and one of the school was, you know what, if you were, because my career was actually going pretty well. And there were, if you worry that, you know, you're not, you're never going to have that opportunity, <laughs> uh, again, to keep growing the way you're growing your company, uh, think twice because that employer will actually, uh, once you graduate from business school, they will for sure be reaching out to you to try to get you back. Right. And lo and behold, once I graduated, you know, my previous employer was actually trying to reach out to me. Of course. Uh, once I got the opportunity with Microsoft, I, I didn't look back because this was a great opportunity for me. Uh, so again, during that journey, I started, uh, uh, you know, getting my finances in order. Uh, lastly, I started doing my research. And then one of the main things that I did, I said, I got to I got to drill down through the noise because a lot of times you only apply for programs that are uh, highly noticed uh, or programs that are you know, I would say sexy titles and those type of things, right? In my mind, what I thought was, I need to find something that is right for me. And that was more important for me than anything. Uh, because I, I, you know, I had this conversation, at the time I was actually speaking to, with a life coach with, who helped me a lot in my career. And one of the messages that he, he would continue to tell me was, forget about living a uh, interesting life. Why don't you focus on living an authentic life, right? And to me, that actually caught my attention. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to start doing my research uh, and, you know, looking at some of these programs and saying, okay, what's the right place for me? And so that's when I started looking at uh, UC Irvine. I started looking at, like I said, uh, most companies that I, or most uh, employers that I look for were in the West Coast. Um, and, and so I look at those universities and said, okay, this is, this is good for me. This is bad for me. So I ended up applying to four different universities uh in the west coast and i applied to one in the east coast uh, ultimately i got accepted in two uh and then uh, what i actually also prioritized was when i did my interviews i prioritized actually traveling to do it on site so that helped me a lot because now that i was in there i could actually tour the school tour you know what's the energy what's the environment tour the city is this the right place for me and so when I went to the East Coast, it was, I mean, they, they had a snowstorm and it was just crazy, right? I mean, the school was, was nice, don't take me wrong. Uh, but I was like, you know what? I, I, I just had this hunch feeling that California was the right approach for me because I, I said, I want to end up in tech. Uh, I, you know, this is the place where I want to be. I'm, and then UC Irvine actually offered a lot of great opportunities. First of all, there was a scholarship attached to it, which I thought was great. Um, you're in the middle of, uh, you know, Los Angeles, San Diego, up north, you have Silicon Valley. Uh, and if you like the, ve the beach, you know, for me, that was a, a great advantage as well. So being close to a nice and warm environment was a great opportunity for me. The other thing that I looked into a program was, can I be in a program that is more um, welcoming in a way where I don't feel like a number, right? And so the one thing I like about UC Irvine was they had the class was around like a hundred people. And to me, that was like, okay, that means, you know, they care about me in a way. Uh, I mean, obviously I was just thinking that then I figured out that, that was the case. Right. 
because I, I saw some other programs that had 1,600 students. How do you even get to network or make any deep relationships? Uh, what happened with me in UC Irvine up until today, you know, I have great relationships with uh, all of the, my classmates. You know, I know everything about their families and how, and they know about myself. Uh, you know, obviously we're calling each other, texting each other, uh, we're visiting each other. So I, I've got like six or seven friends that already came visit me in Seattle. I went down to um, Orange County and then a few of us, I can't unfortunately because I'm traveling somewhere else, but uh, a lot of my friends are actually going to one of my friends' wedding in India. So there's there's a lot of things that you can actually uh, uh, uncover once you do your MBA because your network naturally expands and now you become an international uh, uh, citizen in a way right so from the um uh so i'm looking at some of the questions here that uh were posed to us uh did i prepare the application on my own i or, or did i sought help in consulting i did my applications on my own so what i did was in my mind this was the way i looked at it was i want to prepare these essays in my applications the way that I want to be conveyed, not the way that I think these universities are thinking of me. And so for me, it took me like it's funny because it took me to write the essays about one or two hours, but it took me to get to that point of actually writing those essays about six months of doing my own reality check and doing like saying, why do I want to do this? Why do and, and a lot of questioning in my own mind was like, do I need an MBA to become successful, right? And and a lot of these things were like really saying, okay, I need to put everything in perspective, right? And so uh, when I started writing my essays, it was a, a very internal process of saying, okay, what are my top priorities? What do I need to say? And ultimately when I sent those applications was, you know what, this is who I am, I'm gonna send it. And if they accept me, then that's the universities that I wanna go to, if they don't, they, they don't need a person like me because, you know, I'm not going to write something I'm not, right? And so I was just lucky that <laughs> UC Irvine uh, thought, thought like me. They gave me a chance. They called me up and they said, you know, come come to us, right? Um, other than that, what is the crucial factor that led to the final decision on choosing this particular? You know what? There's a lot of uh, variable factors that want, go into making your decision. Uh, but the one thing I can't fight with myself is, you know, the things that feel just right. You know, when I was in in, in Boston, you know, visiting this this school, uh, it was a snowstorm. Uh, the university felt okay. Uh, it didn't feel like the career progression was going to be there. Uh, it, there. There was question marks. When I was at UCI, right after my interview, like it just kicked in. It was just like this is the place that I want to be. Right. It was just very clear to me. Right. Uh, were they factors? Yes, proximity to the beach, you know, being in California, uh, you know, obviously a scholarship helps you out, you know, the opportunities, uh, the relationship that I had already established. So uh, UC Irvine does an admin, admits weekend, and I went to that admits weekend and I actually got to network and know some of my future uh, possible peers. And so when I was there, I was just like, this is it, you know, I mean, there, I have no question that this is where I want to be. So I think there were, there's a lot of factors, but you can't really fight uh, when you when you become to make your decision of this just feels right, right? Uh, and then you know there's a there's a lot of things here in terms of questions. One of them is educational journey throughout the degree. So I know that I don't have a lot of questions. I will share with you some slides in terms of things that uh, I went through during business school, and then I'll tell you about uh, there's a question around insights and social events, lifestyles, uh, and those type of things. So during uh, business school, there's a lot of competitions that go through, right? And I probably signed up for as many competitions as I could. There was an entrepreneurship competition called the Fast Forward Competition. And uh, the nice thing about it is UC Irvine has this whole innovation center for entrepreneurs. And so I, we want my, um, one of my greatest friends from business school, uh, him and I said, you know what, we think alike, we both want to be entrepreneurs at some point in our lives, so why don't we just go to that competition? And went to that competition, ended up coming up with this augmented reality solution for automotive, uh, won that competition, we were awarded like a pair of patents, and you know, it was, it was just a crazy experience. 
And I'll speak more to that startup that you know we started doing business school because it led to great things. Um, today, uh, you know, obviously we discontinued that startup, uh, but it was you know it was it was a great run. And if you have the chance to do that during business school, it'll open so many doors, right? Uh, the next competition that I was part of was a tech and entrepreneurship competition. This was an amazing competition, as you see in that meeting room. Uh, this is a case where, uh, for instance, they give one side of the table, there's supposed to be a big company uh, and the, the big pharmaceutical company that is actually infringing on your patent. And on the, on the right side, we're the small guys and we're saying, you guys are infringing on our patent. So the nice thing that UCI does is they pair you up from the business school with the engineering school and also with the law school. So now you're in, in a table sitting in a negotiation and your team is an is a, a engineer and obviously a, um, a a biomedical engineer in my case, and then the other uh, and, and a lawyer, right? And so we're going at it for about eight hours trying to strike a deal into you know what's the right model that we need to collect? Is it royalties? Is it a buyout? Is it you know is it a partnership? Is it a strategic alliance? You know what are we actually going to strike and then if we actually close a deal what are some of the terms and 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 the actual numbers that we're going to come up to an agreement right and it's fascinating because you're there and it's just just going back and forth in this negotiation you learn so much about yourself about your peers about your abilities to negotiate uh obviously at some points it got heated and you know you got to retreat and you know go take a break uh but it was an amazing experience at the end you, you'd be amazed about like all the different business models or the different agreements that every negotiation table had, it was just crazy, right? So it's a great experience. I learned a lot from that. Uh, and so my negotiation skills got a lot better from that. The last one was around uh, tech uh, innovation. Uh, and this was a competition that actually happened in um, Notre Dame University. I was part of that competition and uh, we came up with this uh, blockchain solution to support uh, mitigation or tax avoidance, right? And it was a, a great experience. Uh, fortunately, I wasn't able to travel to Notre Dame, but my team that was that I was working with uh, was able to travel and we won that competition, right? So it's always great to actually put the name of your university up there. So it was an amazing competition. The school helped us, you know, pay for some of the uh, expenses to go travel. Uh, and obviously, it, you know, winning is always fascinating, right? And the other thing I want to share with you is uh, basically the opportunity of being an entrepreneur during business school. What happens if you be, if you try to do something as a startup during business school, it's first of all, it's a great experiential opportunity, right? You get to know a lot of people, you get to know venture capitalists, how the system works, how to set up a company, how to, you know, write a patent. Uh, you know, there are so many things that you learn from that because if you're like me coming from another country, the laws in the US, in the US are much different. So to me, that was a great experience. Uh, the other thing is, you know, even in, 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 in the most advanced companies in Mexico where I was coming from, there wasn't that much advancements in technologies like being able to see a car in augmented reality, using whole lens, being able to overlay things on, uh, you know, on, on augmented reality. So it was just a great experience to, first of all, use full technology uh, try to you know get closer to accomplishing my dream of inventing the future and at the same time meeting colleagues and peers that are amazingly talented uh, you know that's uh, the, the part of that I was talking to you about that's Emre this is a friend from Turkey that I met during business school uh, you know amazing the, the luxury of being in business school is think about the quality of talent that you can have for your own startup you have all MBAs with different backgrounds he had a background from finance I had a background from marketing uh, and then now I'm actually doing business development and strategy at Microsoft. He's actually today a product marketing manager at Mattel. So when you think about the quality of your network that you're, you're starting to build, you know, it, it's a great opportunity to, you know, try things up, you know, ultimately, uh, and I, and I hate to say it like this, but it's not like you're going to, um, you know, waste your time doing something because at the end of the day you're doing business school so you're, you already have this sunk cost that you're already paying for school so basically take advantage of all the things that the school gives you at uc irvine one when, when we won that competition we entered this incubator process that's called wayfinder they gave us office space they gave us uh access to mentors uh you know opportunities to present to venture capitalists uh, venture capitalists or uh 
angel investor. So there's a lot of opportunities that come to it. Right. And then obviously the alumni network, you know, especially like we reached out to probably about 10 or 20 alumni, they all open the doors, right? If we knock the door saying, Hey, listen, I have this business idea. I'm a UCI, um, you know, student actually going through this at MBA and, and I want to talk to you and run this idea about you. We got people to open the doors in, uh, Karma Automotive, uh, Toyota, uh, Penske, uh, like all the different automotive firms, uh, especially around the area, they all opened the doors. Uh, I ended up speaking to uh, some people in uh, Mercedes-Benz R&D uh, in, in Northern California. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of opportunities to start engaging with people, right? And, and uh, I learned a lot by making those relationships. Uh, and obviously, we were considered one of the LA's, uh, Los Angeles most innovative companies. We won a prize for that and things like that. So what happened is, is uh, and I, I said that this leads to a lot of things that you don't expect to. Um, when we actually started, you know, getting some traction, we were considered one of the most innovative companies. Uh, this guy right here in the picture, his name is Patrick Sunshung. He's, uh, I think it's, now is the second richest guy in LA. So amazing entrepreneur, philanthropist. He's a great guy. Uh, he invited us to his office to present their idea. Uh, extremely interested in us. He gave us our pat the, the patents that we had. So we actually ended up filing four patents. And he said, you know what? I got this for you. And so, uh, you know, great opportunity to be that. Like, you know, what other, <laughs> how else would you actually stand up and present to a guy whose net worth is 15 billion, right? So it was just a fun experience, right? Um, the other thing I wanted to share, and I, I, I want to make this fast. So, so working or being part of uh, UC Irvine, UC Irvine has a lot of programs and things that will help you become much better. One of the best things that I found, and it, it's not one of the best, I probably the best thing that I went through while in business school was actually engaging in this program called Tech on Campus, which is basically the executive committee on campus. So Gary Brenderson, the guy in the middle, uh, he actually comes with you and does one-to-one -one coaching on a monthly basis, right? And that's not only around your academics. I mean, you're, you, you have your MBA to get better at leadership, our negotiations, financials, uh, you know, accounting, whatever it is that you need to do, marketing analytics. There's a lot of things. Uh, UCI has an amazing program, right? But then Gary takes, you, takes a, a select group of 12 people and he will go with you around what are your fulfillment goals, your career goals, uh, where are your relationships with yourself, with your family, uh, you know, those type of things. And then how do you actually make the most out of this experience and this opportunity, right? So you go in on a month to month basis with the guy who has seen it all, done it all. Uh, Gary is an amazing guy. He's been, you know, uh, an entrepreneur, a business owner, a, uh, you know, public company CEO, I mean, he, he's done all those things, right? So there's a lot of experiences that he can share. Uh, and then not only him, but the relationships with the team itself, the 12 people that are in there become so much tighter. So, you know, it's funny because we have this group chat and, you know, anything that happens, this this 12 people group is just remains together, right? It's like a tight knit that doesn't go anywhere. So it's great that you create those relationships. Of course, you know, all of these guys are, wildly successful. So, you know, I'm just excited for them every time they, they do something different, right? So it's, it's, it's great to keep in touch with them, not just at the professional level, but at the personal level. Um, and so that's also one of the great, and also Gary brings every month, brings a speaker from outside. Uh, and so you'll, you'll be like, it was just funny, you know, and, and I was used to reading some of these business cases on like Harvard Business Review business cases and those type of things. But I never spoke to the actual guy who, who was part of that business case. And it was amazing. Like one of those experiences was when he brought that guy, uh, you know, speaking about his uh, experience during that case. And we didn't know that person was actually the person in the case. So we were saying, like, you should have done this. You should have done that. Ultimately, we realized that that was the guy. So we're pretty much telling him what to do. Right? It was pretty embarrassing. But um, it's it's a great experience to speak to people that are, that are you know, there have been where you want to go, right? And then ultimately what I wanted to share with you is this is a great experience. Like if you really are committed to uh, doing your MBA, 
you know, the people that you'll meet uh, from all over the world, I mean, the amazing experience that you're going to have. Obviously, California is a great place, very chill. People are so nice. Everywhere you go, I mean, and not to criticize some of what happens in Seattle. Seattle people are pretty quiet. Uh, but when you're in Orange County, like everyone's actually very open to talk to you. Um, UC Irvine does what we call the Bay Area Trek. So uh, I think it's in December. Uh, they'll do a trip. Will they take us all to uh, the Bay Area to visit some companies? This is us visiting LinkedIn. But we went to Google. We went to Twitter. We went to Apple. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of companies that we visited. I was pretty impressed with uh, Autodesk. Uh, so a lot of great companies that you'll go visit, not just to learn how do they do business, but also uh, as a recruiting motion, right? So you might end up landing an opportunity there to do your internship or to get a full-time job. You never know. We actually... Uh, I think one of us made a relationship with uh, LinkedIn there and then landed a full-time position. So there's international trips. This is me and my wife. We took our, our friends from uh, uh, from business school to Mexico and it was, just, it was just fun. So my buddy here uh, right next to my wife is from Ghana. His wife is from Michigan. We took him to Mexico. We had a blast. It was a Mexican experience. Uh, but there's also different trips that people have done. Uh, the school organizes a trip, I think, to the Netherlands. It was last year uh, to Vietnam, to Cuba. I mean, there's a lot of uh, places that people are going. So lots of opportunities to travel. Um, and then Stanford weekend. This is a weekend that all of the, uh, uh, I think it's around six or seven uh, universities from, from the West Coast go to Stanford uh, campus, to Stanford University. And we compete mainly on two things. The first one is who can raise the more the most money for uh, charity, right? So this is called Challenge for Charity. So all of these schools are actually <laughs> trying different ways of actually coming up with more money to be able to support charity uh, contributions, right? And then the other thing is we friendly compete on on uh, intramural sports like softball, volleyball, and everything. But the nice thing is that you get this great opportunity to network with. Uh, people from UCLA, Stanford, uh, UC uh, San Francisco, uh, who else is there? Uh, uh, USC, I think University of Washington is there. So there's a lot of, you know, it, it's just a great opportunity to network around. Right? And then last, I mean, California offers a lot of things. You go to sports, there's tournaments, there's tennis, they have two football teams, they have, uh, what is it, two basketball teams. I mean, it's just it's just I, I love sports so that was a big win for me so but that's a little bit of where i'm at uh i hope that share a little bit of what was my journey like and what was my actually stay there and obviously today uh i'm currently at microsoft i'm you know obviously oh sorry i forgot to mention surf trips those are amazing in california if you like the beach and the sun california is a place for you uh, and then from my side, uh, you know, today, obviously, I'm at Microsoft today. It's been a great experience. It's, this is year two for me. Uh, last year, it was more of like understanding and getting up to speed of, you know, how Microsoft operates. Uh, a lot of it was I was actually running uh, the business applications division for education at a world -world level. Uh, and it was a great experience for me for, for about eight or nine months and then that's when my manager said you know what there's this this great opportunity for you to move forward and so now i'm running this sales motion that uh mina talked to you guys about in the beginning mila uh and that you know i'm running this program in 50 over 50 countries around 150 people that you know are actually aligned to the strategy that i'm designing so it's just it's just great to see how your efforts come out and and, and go at scale um the last thing i'll say is it's not easy. It takes a lot of effort. It's, it takes every day being committed to your vision and to your dream. Uh, but if you do it, you know, obviously I'm, I'm one person that is happy to say, you know, it, it paid off. And I think to me, the way I look at things today here at Microsoft, it's only the beginning. You know, there's a lot of great things that will come. And so I'm just excited for, you know, the next step as well. Right. So, so I don't know, Mila, that, that, I hope that resumes it a little bit and please feel free to ask any questions in the chat or through Mila, let me know. Yes, thank you so much. Um, we can now start with the live Q&A session. Uh, please everyone, um, if you can type uh, your questions in the chat box and we already have some questions uh, queued up. 
So first of all, I'm going to read them out loud so everyone can hear me. Um, one of them is, what is the most important thing that you've learned in terms of knowledge during your MBA? Uh, so I think that that would be, so I will speak to my personal learning. Uh, what I learned the most is to think quantitatively. I think my background was in marketing. And so uh, I think that a lot of my decisions were intuition driven, uh, where, you know, this feels right, let's do it. I think when I went to business school, my whole decision making process changed a lot. Now I'm more, I'm a lot more quantitative, very data driven. So a lot of my decision making, I still listen to my hunch and my gut and my intuition, uh, but just I always, I, do a lot of calculations and I'm always thinking about, okay, what's the best scenario? How do I actually do it? Run a couple scenarios. So my quant skills really got up. Uh, and that was thanks primarily to classes such as obviously finance. Uh, I took many courses in accounting, believe it or not. Uh, and so those were very helpful. And then I also took a couple of classes into uh, one class that I really liked, which was mastering predictive analytics. That was an amazing class for me because I learned really you know, how to think differently and how to make those decisions based on data. So to me, it was more of being a lot more data driven. Now, I came from a very creative side of things. So from a marketing standpoint, so I really needed and I wanted to learn those type of skills. But I know the experience of a lot of my peers that came from an engineering background and they said, you know what, I need to get better at my soft skills or my presentation skills. And so they, 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 that's what they did, right? So they focused on those classes like marketing and like, um, you know, I, I actually tried not to take any courses in marketing because I've done that for eight years, right? So I, I felt like I needed to look at something different and that has helped me a lot. Like today I am uh, three things. First of all, I'm managing this, uh, you know, I can't say the number, but a pretty large budget uh, inside the organization. I'm managing a couple of programs and obviously everything that I'm actually managing and investing in, I'm actually monitoring through predictive analytics and obviously just general uh, business intelligence to be able to say, okay, first of all, can I track and measure what the impact that we're doing? And also how can I actually optimize that model so that my investments get much better moving forward? Right? So to me, it was more the quant skills for some of the folks who came from quant background was more of the creative and leadership and communication skills. Right? Thank you. Um, we are moving forward with the next question, um, and it is, if you were to start your application process today, would you do something in a different way? I think I would. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I don't look back and say, you know, I should have done, I, ne I have no regrets in my life. I think this was a great thing. I think the one thing I would have probably done was, uh, and, and this is my advice to anyone who's actually looking for to apply to a program is, try to talk to some of the folks who are already going to that university, right? Because I never did that. And obviously, uh, I didn't have a good grasp on to what to expect on day one. Uh, I didn't have a network coming in. So I, there, I, I missed the boat on a lot of things that uh, some of my friends had already done. Initially, I also was considering going into consulting, for instance, right? And so since I didn't speak to anyone, I didn't realize that, you know, month one, uh, applications for the consulting world were actually closing up, right? And so I didn't know that, so I didn't speak to anyone. So my recommendation is if you're thinking about UCI, uh, go out and talk to some of the candidates or some of the current students or some of the alumni, uh, and then do the same thing for other universities and compare. The only, uh, I think I did engage with one person of, of another program, <laughs> and I actually, I mean, I didn't get accepted to a program, but I actually didn't like the, the conversation I had, so I was like, that's not the place for me. <laughs> uh, but I probably should have done the same thing for the rest of the programs that I applied for, so that would be the only different thing, right? Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, um, and the next question is, um, do you still keep in touch with friends you made in the university? For sure, for sure. That's, you know, I'm speaking to them on a daily basis. Uh, actually, three of my friends are up here in the Bay Area. They're actually working at, at, at Amazon. Uh, another is working at a retail company. Uh, some of them are working, I mean, there's, there's a lot of friends that actually moved up to Seattle. So I see them like, you know, last weekend we went up for beers. Uh, and then my Orange County buddies that are still there, 
Uh, every now and then I, I go visit when I miss the sun because it's it's too cloudy in Seattle. Uh, but definitely I go there. They have come up here, at least 10 or 15 friends already come um, all together. Uh, again, we're, I'm not going to be able to go, but some of my friends are actually going to go to, uh, two friends are actually getting married back to back weekends in India. And I'm so unfortunate that I'm not going to be able to make it. Uh, but it's it's a lot of fun. Like every every time, like two things. Obviously, there's the fun side. Uh, there's the side where you're saying, "I'm so happy to see them because they're my true friends, and we created this really close, tight knit." But at the same time, from a professional standpoint, uh, you know, I can't wait for uh, next year because next year I'm February. I'm actually traveling to Asia, and I'll go visit my friends in Japan. And then I'm I got a friend that's actually you know working for Google in Singapore. Uh, so, I mean, th there's a lot of great connections that you end up making and you're, you're obviously your world just becomes connected, you know, with people that you can talk to anywhere. Right. So definitely keep in touch. And it's, it, and if you don't, it, it, like if anyone that had an MBA doesn't, then they missed out on the value of the MBA. Cause I think ultimately it comes down to your network and your relationships. The, the other thing I was going to say, sorry to, 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 to interrupt Miller is um, also make sure that you network not just with your peers. Uh, what I saw during business school, I actually created a lot of network with my teachers. And some of them sit in boards. Some of them actually have, you know, are CEOs of companies. Uh, so it, it, not only for your personal gain or interest, but also you have a lot to learn from them, right? And so I always, you know, even today, keeping, I mean, when I have time, because I'm super busy today, but I try to email them every now and then say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. Uh, am I in line with chasing my dreams or not? And then if not, I'll ask for advice. If yes, I'll say just to keep you updated. Uh, they will all, always you know, answer back because you, you create this support system, right? So there's nothing like, like if, if you ever taught something, if you're a teacher, there's nothing better than seeing how your students succeed, right? So uh, I always like to keep in touch with them. Okay, thank you. Um, another question. How many of your peers have started a business together after graduating? Um, I think one of them was actually recently on Shark Tank, <laughs> which was pretty fascinating to me. Uh, he, he was also in the uh, automotive sector, obviously myself in the automotive sector, but you know, I ended up shutting down that venture. Um, trying to think if anyone else I'd have to get back to you um, not on the top of my head because well yeah I think there's actually two guys in Japan who the, the thing is that in some cases not only do they start a business but they go run a family-owned business so I have a friend in Japan who actually runs his family-based business and that was his goal when he came in so you can think of it as a you know business venture I have another friend in um, um, but it in uh, Thailand, who is actually running his own his own business as well. So I mean, and because it's family business, they keep on running new businesses, right? But you know, it's just to give you some perspective. I don't know that anyone uh, is actually um, had a like a stack startup or anything like that. I don't know of that. But, yeah. Okay, um, we have time for uh, a couple of questions um, more. Uh, did Microsoft approach you or did you apply for the job? I apply for the job. Uh, I think, and that's a, a great question, I think. So the way it happens once you're in business school, uh, and you know, I, I quickly realized this, right? You think you're an MBA and then, okay, everyone's going to start reaching out to me. It doesn't work that way. Whether any program you're in, it's, it's a challenge, right? Because there are so limited positions uh, for like internships, for instance, right? Because not every company does an internship. So you really have to focus on really early on start apply. Uh, in my case, I you know was able to do an internship for Experian, which is an Orange County company. Uh, I think they're one of the market leaders in credit scores. So it was a, it was a great experience for me. I actually tried something different when I was in my internship. I tried to do product management. I thought, you know, that might be my thing. I realized it wasn't. Uh, so that's another thing for the MBA. Uh, you're able to 
experience and try new things and say, you know, this is for me, this is not for me. In my case, I realized product management was not my thing. I like uh, biz dev, I like strategy, I like sales, commercial, top of the line uh, growth. And so that's where I ended up coming into Microsoft. Uh, but um, but in terms of actually applying to companies, I don't think that, you know, in any, uh, in any, I mean, if that was the case and you're a lucky person um, or, you know, or maybe are super blessed and gifted, but I, I don't think that anyone gets anything handed over uh, without hard work. I'll just say that, right? Because I think it, it takes a lot of time for you to get to network with people. In my case, I started networking with people. I started applying. One of the things I started doing was uh, Christmas time, I figured, you know what, all my buddies and all, all MBAs are on vacation. And, but, you know, businesses continue to run in Christmas. So I was like, that's my opportunity. So I got an apply mode in Christmas and I said, when everyone's sleeping, I'm working, right? And so ultimately that paid off and I got the offer from Microsoft and I had another offer from a consulting firm. Um, so, uh, but, you know, ultimately it will not be handed over. You'll need to put some work in. Uh, and and it's a very competitive space. Even when I came to Microsoft, I came to Seattle, and we had four interviews, and there was eight candidates. Uh, I think one person was from uh, New York University Stern, one person was from Darden, uh, Booth. Um, I can't remember the rest. You know, there was about eight people, right? But they only gave two rolled out, right? So. Even if you get called for the interview, you come up here and you gotta compete, right? So ultimately, to me, I was, uh, I think, I I actually think that I did a great interview, uh, but at the same time, there's there's some luck to everything, right? You always gotta know that, uh, you know, just to get the call, it's it's a luck uh, kind of thing that happens. Uh, but obviously, the, the 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 harder you work, the luckier you get, right? And I know that's very cliche, but that's true. While we're on the topic, there is another question. Uh, is there a program for recruiting MBA candidates in the university? Is there a program for recruiting MBA candidates? I'm not sure I understand that question. Like from a, from Microsoft, you mean? So Microsoft, Microsoft, and I don't know if they're answered back. If they do, feel free to interrupt me. Microsoft does have a program. So Microsoft has a program called the Aspire Experience, the MBA Aspire Experience. Uh, and so what they do is they hire around 250 plus MBA candidates around the world. Uh, and so they have a season, uh, there's, a, there's a team called University Recruiting. When I applied, it used to be called the Mac MBA program and they changed the name, they rebranded it last year. Now, they, now it's called the MBA Aspire program. So what they do is they actually bring it every year around 250 MBAs. Uh, and, you know, it's actually a, a really great experience inside Microsoft. What I've seen is, you know, meeting people from every uh, school of business possible. And then they take you to like this onboarding event with all of them. So you, you do a lot of great networking MBA still inside Microsoft. And then last July, so, so are we still in September? So last month, uh, we ended up, uh, sorry, two months ago. So we ended up going to Vegas for about a week. So Microsoft takes us there, all the MBAs. And what they do is obviously they, they put you into this training session. It's actually a heavy training session, but it's great. It's on leadership, on understanding what, what are your triggers, your motivators, uh, what upsets you. So they try to upset you, by the way. So, uh, but it's a great experience because you'll learn like what are some of those triggers that get you even high or low. Uh, and then how to work with others, how to actually collaborate more. So it was a great experience for me. Uh, and then ultimately the networking is just great because you're in Vegas with all your all the MBAs from different schools. So it was it was a lot of fun. And obviously they, they continue to train you. Uh, you know, and by the way, I continue to hang out with my MBA buddies and also with the MBA buddies that I uh, made in Microsoft. So we have this get together once a month. Uh, we create a good a good group of people that you know we 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 think alike. So we're like, okay, let's go hang out, you know, do things, and and we keep doing that. Right? So I hope I hope that answered the question. I'm not sure if that was what's being asked. Thank you. Um, that will be the last question in our Q and A session. 
Um, I would like, would like to take, thank all of you for joining us and uh, thank you, um, Arturo, uh, for the wonderful um, and informative presentation. Um, it was an honor to have you and um, you will uh, put to all the attendees, you will uh, receive a link with the recording of the whole webinar so you can rewatch it. Um, on behalf of you and my team, we wish you luck in your academic journey and hope to meet you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for the participation. Thank you very much, Mila, and thank you, everyone. If you want to uh, write to me, arturo.san at microsoft.com, I'll be available there. Uh, I was very happy to be here, so thanks, I guess, for having me. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye to all.